Tell me um, a little bit more about this man, how it was to photograph him. Did, did you ask his permission? Did he, was Rob, he uncomfortable? Not well, that's connected to another portrait. Um, my sister was given, you know, word that her liver was failing and this one is was the one she had after a transplant. Mm -hmm. And I knew that I would not, uh, probably would never see her again. And because of health issues, it was extremely hard for me to make that trip, but I felt like that I had to do it. So we left and uh, drove to Florida to see my sister on the way down there to see her. Um, we stopped at this place and, and my husband saw this, uh, the engineering mind wants to know, he saw a roof that really interested him. <laughs> He said, and I was in the car, he said, do you mind if I uh, go, <laughs> do you mind if I go over here for a while and, you know, examine this room? And my feet are on the dashboard because of this disorder I had and the blood didn't circulate properly, so I have to keep them up. Anyway, uh, so I'm sitting there and I look at the direction where he's going and I saw this old man sitting under that thatched roof and his image just was so striking and it was like I have to have this and uh, so I grabbed the camera out of the uh, back seat and I went under the little thatched roof and I sat down and he looked he was playing the guitar he was a street musician and when I pulled my camera out you know he was looking a little apprehensive but then I remembered your words, you know, keep your business card with you. And, and so, uh, and every time I have presented my business card, people have been very agreeable. So I gave him my business card and a little bit of cash. And I asked him, I said, would you uh, mind me taking photographs of you? Well, actually, Rob took most of the photographs. And he said, no. In fact, he was so pleased. He said, well, can you take some with my dark glasses on? I haven't done that portrait yet. I would like to do that one, too. We took several shots of him. We went to see my sister. I did what I needed to do there, came home, and I sat on that one for about five months, and I woke up one morning, and I thought, it, you need to do that today. And I got up, and I started doing it, and I, there was such emotions attached to putting his face on on paper mm -hmm. because a lot of things I had forgotten as a child they started coming back when I was looking at his face and a lot of things that I didn't put in the story about the bigotry mm -hmm. that I was exposed to and uh, as a child it's a wonder I didn't become that way myself but a lot of that came back to me and I looked at his face and he had all these matted uh, dreadlocks and I, I just, I thought he was so beautiful and uh, I wanted to be able to make him look beautiful and of course when I am working on a piece I pray that the Lord will cause other people to see and feel what I feel when I'm doing it. As I laid in layer after layer of values in this portrait, I wondered, what is the story? Do I tell he was a street musician playing his songs for tips? Or would his eyes lead me to tell what I thought his life might be? All the while, there was an image burnt in my mind, one from childhood I could never forget. I was born in the 1950s and raised in the Deep South. It was impossible to be a part of that generation without being exposed to prejudice and bigotry. Even as a child, I never believed in the prejudices that surrounded me. It was something I could never understand. I never understood why humans could treat each other so badly. It seemed that what separated humanity in those days was color. In the South, hair color didn't matter. Eye color was no problem. 
Only skin. Why? My grandfather owned a little grocery store, and often I visited there. A few blocks down the road was a neighborhood burger joint that my grandfather patronized. On the side of that restaurant was a sign over a window instructing blacks to place their orders there while my grandfather and I went in the front door and enjoyed our food in air conditioning that was only afforded to its white customers. As a child, I never spoke of that window. I knew not to. I've never been able to forget the image of that side window and felt so badly that such a thing ever existed. As I worked on this gentleman's portrait, the image of that side window lingered, faint and worn from carrying it in the pocket of my mind since I was a child. It made me want to go and see if the building was still there. Was the side window still there? Or had it been erased so as not to remind us of the shame of our past? Someday this life will end. I believe in heaven. I believe the only race represented there will be the human race. I believe everyone that enters there will all eat at the same table and sing the same song. I believe Revelation 5 and 9. And they sang a new song saying, You're worthy to take a scroll because you were slain. And with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. I believe these words, and they make me know there will be no side window in heaven. <laughs>